Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I have another beauty video. This one involves an epilator, but it's not for the body. No, this one is for the face. I've never epilated my face before. I've never had threading. So I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this. You might have seen my epilation video that I did on the legs using the Braun Silk Appeal 5, I think it was. If not, you can see the video here or I'll pop it in the info box below. Um, today's is gonna be a total live demo and review because I have the Braun facial epilator and cleansing brush. I'm not a massive cleansing brush fan, but I'm gonna see what this epilator is like and um, give it a whirl. I'm not gonna lie, this is quite scary. I've never had anything moving fast around my face other than a Clarisonic. So something that's gonna pull hairs out, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And if it's anything like the first time I had my eyebrows tweezed, then somebody better go and get me some ice and some tissues to mop up these tears because there's gonna be some. So this is the epilator. It looks pretty harmless. Um, I think it has two speeds like the body epilators. <laughs> so yeah, I was hoping one was gonna be slower than the other, but they both seem quite as vigorous as each other, which is probably not the best when you're going into this the, for the first time. Um, this is the cleansing brush head, which I think pops onto the top there. And then there's a little cleaning brush. And inside you also get a highly magnified mirror, which is illuminated. So it's really good to see the hairs. Um, if you're in a bit of a self-deprecating mood, then this might be a bit intense because it really does show up them pores quite magnificently. Yep, yeah, that's not great. Now, of course, whenever you epilate or remove in hair, the skin around the area needs to be clean. It just prevents any blocked pores, you know, blemishes and stuff happening if you have makeup on. Now, of course, I have makeup on because I wasn't planning on doing this video and I thought, let's give this a review. So, what I'm gonna do with my intense magnifying glass is just take a makeup wipe and remove the makeup from where I'm gonna be epilating. Now, Caroline, who runs, will not like this. So, if you are watching, I'm sorry, Caroline. I didn't realize I was gonna be doing this. So I'm gonna epilate above the brows, in between the brows. The sides here, because believe it or not, although I don't have, you know, hair that goes all the way down the sides, I definitely have downy hair, which is quite long and blonde, so I wouldn't mind testing that out. I might just get one side done <laughs> and then leave the other side like Wolverine. We'll see. Now, thankfully, I don't have any hairs at the sides of my mouth or the top of my lip just yet. I mean, check back in 10 years time because that might be a different story. Um, if you do, then just make sure the area is totally clean. You might find you need to epilate a little bit on your chin. That's fine. Um, if the hair growth is down to hormonal changes, then just check with your doctor because things like epilating might make it worse. So then let's switch this on. Now there has to be a slower one, let me check. So I've got it, this has nothing to do with speed, unfortunately, it's actually to do with the direction of the tweezers. So they're gonna rotate either left or right. Now the reason for that is because you go against the hair growth. And I've always said that with epilating and tweezing, sorry, not tweezing, shaving, and I know a few of you have argued against that. So the hair, just say for example, on the top lip grows downwards from either side. So you wanna go in the opposite direction, okay? And it's got arrows on the side there to guide. The hair on the side of your face would grow downwards. So you wanna go against that. Same here and the same um, in the middle of the brows. You might find it's a little bit directional on the top of the brow. So some might be going this way, some might be going that way, some might be straight. So just have a look in your mirror. I mean, it is, it does get really, really personal in there. So you should be able to see. I'm gonna test this out on the top lip. Actually, am I gonna go in the deep end? 
I don't know, we'll go with the middle of the brow because I feel like that's going to be the least painful. So. Oh my gosh. It's definitely removing them. It's not as bad as I thought actually. Be really gentle on the skin. And obviously you don't want to get too close to the corner of your brow, the inner corner, ow. Oh God. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna to get too close and hold it this side, because it'll take half of that brow off. I'm gonna swap, I'm gonna change direction and hold it in my other hand. So it definitely feels a lot smoother. I think if you had dark hairs, you'd see the benefits straight away because my facial hair is quite blonde. You can't see, but I can definitely feel the difference. Yeah, I can see how much smoother the skin looks there. Now it tells you to stick your tongue and your top lip and push outwards. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite a sore. Now the lip area is painful, which I knew it would be. And it's almost like when you get a little spot on your lip line, and it's one of those really painful ones where if you touch it, your eyes start watering. I'm gonna give the sides a go now. Make sure all this is out the way. Oh, oh my gosh. So I've had to stop there because it was getting a little bit painful. Um, I was expecting the top lip to be the most painful area because it's more sensitive and the skin's thinner. But what I did find was the sides were the most painful area. And I think that's because the hair's thicker there and there's also a lot more of it. So you're gonna have the constant sensation of pulling. I think if facial hair is something that bothers you a lot, then you would definitely put up with this because after a few tries you would totally get used to it. Um, for me, because I don't have a lot of facial hair, if anything I would use it there and there. It's not really something that I would invest in, but I think it's it definitely gives you results. Um, so, you know, if facial hair is something that you want to remove and you want to do it at home, you don't want to go to a salon, then this is a really good idea. So overall, this gets a thumbs up for me. Um, if you have anything else that you'd like me to review, if you've got any suggestions of beauty videos or beauty hacks, then just let me know. Leave them in the comments box below. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.